Hello, everybody. I'm Lance Koike, and today we are continuing our things that everybody messes up when they do bent over rows. I'm, I'm serious. If you have if you don't know what a three-point supported row is, that you probably haven't watched my video. You probably haven't worked up and learned like some beginner variations. Maybe you never learned how to actually do rows, so it's really common. I would say 80% of the people that I don't train that I see in the gym do it this way. Uh, today, we're not talking about arching your back too much, though we talked about that yesterday, and how it destabilizes your core and how it turns off some of some of your back muscles and turns on some of your other back muscles. It doesn't allow you to fully load the ones you want to train and it turns on the ones you want to stay kind of calm so that your discs don't hurt so much. Or whatever, don't don't read into that too much. That's not really correct. Um, and, and you got to find the hamstring, right? Today, we're talking about the shoulder. We're not talking about the back. We're not talking about the hips. We're not talking about the hamstrings. We're not talking about the RDL. We're talking about the shoulder. So uh, the, the most common thing, even people who know what they're doing sometimes have trouble with this because the rib cage mechanics are really important here. It's you're not getting your shoulders back. If I don't get the scapula to come around on the rib cage, then the shoulder joint doesn't poke back there. It doesn't point backwards slightly. And then the rotation that I need to get my full range of motion, to get that full squeeze, it doesn't occur. I'm not driving it from here. I'm driving it from here. Okay. I drive it from my shoulder joint rather than from my arm as a unit. It looks like this. If I'm bent over and I don't get my shoulder blades to come back like this, they stay forward and then my shoulders kind of tilt forward. The front of my shoulder pokes out forward. And what that does is it puts extra stress on the biceps tendon here, puts extra stress on the glenoid uh, labrum. Uh, if you've had slap lesions, you should definitely avoid this. If you have any other type of shoulder issue, you got to look at this. You got to make sure you're not doing this because you're just cranking that joint. You're putting too much movement and compression at the same time on that joint. What you want is to direct the entire thing backward and then ask the shoulder joint to move because now it's in a different position and now it's not going to grind that stuff out quite as much. I don't mean to say these these really <laughs> visceral terms like grind, but honestly, there's no reason you should be rowing this way. You should definitely be getting your shoulder blades back, initiating with the, the muscles in your upper back, not in the back of your shoulder. And then from there, you just throw on training, right? Make sure that you're initiating from the shoulder blade and not from the shoulder joint.